Hey everyone, welcome back to another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. If you're new, my name is Quincy Davis. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this lesson so much that you smash that like button. So in this lesson, I am going to be offering you tips for better trading on the drums. And for me, trading has always been more difficult than actually taking a whole solo over a form. And I think the reason is because you have such a finite amount of time to get your ideas out. Um, so I've actually had to think about some of these strategies and tips for myself uh, to make sure that I feel comfortable with my own trading. So I think these tips are going to be helpful for you as well. So if you're ready, then I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Are you really ready this week for the trades, the trading? Well, if so, let's go. All right, so the first thing that I always have to remind myself when I'm trading is to think ahead. And it may seem obvious, but um, kind of when we're in the heat of the moment, we're getting excited, there's a chance that we forget to think ahead exactly about what's going to ha happen next. So think ahead and have an idea of how you want to start your trade. And for me, that has helped me so much. So I'll, I'll demonstrate what that kind of looks like. Uh, and convey exactly the idea that I'm thinking before I get there and play it. Flat on. That's what I'm going to do. Right? Blah, 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 blah. Right? So those, I was trading fours in that case. And as you can hear, I was playing exactly what I was singing, right? And maybe it wasn't perfectly exactly, perfectly exact. It's that damn green tea again. Um, maybe it wasn't perfectly exactly, but it was mostly exactly perfect. All right, so let's say you're still struggling with coming up with ideas to play, right? Well, one of the problems might be the second tip, which is make sure you have a plethora of language and vocabulary in your belt that you've studied, you transcribed, you listen to, right? And you only do that from listening to great master drummers. I don't need to list them, but I will. Jimmy Cobb, Frankie Dunlop, Ben Riley, Papa Joe Jones, Max Roach, Bill Stewart, Lewis Nash, all of them, do all of them. Mel Lewis, Buddy Rich, whoever you gravitate towards, learn a lot of their stuff and get it in your playing. That way you have so much to draw from. And you never want to try to sound exactly like them when you're on a gig. When you're in the practice room, you do. When you're on a gig, just play. And hopefully you've studied them enough that it just starts to come out. By the way, I got a volume one and now a volume two of solo vac vocabulary that you can check out. So that's gonna give you a whole lot of language to check out. All right, so this next tip um, is really extremely important. Sometimes play the opposite, stay with me, of what you naturally might do, either dynamically or density-wise, uh, language-wise. There's so many different things that you, you might have a tendency to do and try to do something different. And the reason is because sometimes we think we have to do something when we don't have to do it. Let me say that again. Sometimes we think we have to do something when we don't have to do it, okay? So sometimes we think we have to play a lot 
to sound good or to to sound hip but you don't so in those instances when you feel like you want to play a lot right instead of going Not saying that sound is so horrible, but instead of doing that, maybe I'll go like this. Right? So I kind of started it the same, but then I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to go down that just kind of loud, dense path. I want to do something a little more interesting. So, and this only happens when you're really experienced and you have the confidence to try something different. Don't try something different if you're not comfortable with it. Um, but when you get to that point when you, you find yourself kind of regurgitating the same ideas and playing the same way, that's definitely a tip that will help me. I mean you. Me, you, me, both of us. Okay, so this next one, right? It's really important. Sometimes we turn off our ears when we're trading. You can't do that. Stay acutely aware of everything that's going on in the song, in the form. It's all right there and also in the band. And there within those those things, right? Those areas, you might get some ideas that inspire your own trades. So let's say I'm playing and the song you know, maybe the song is based on this rhythm. Bat on, bat on. Maybe that's the rhythm, right? Or a certain, maybe the bridge goes, boobity beep boody. Right? So why not put that in my trade? <laughs> you know, and it doesn't sound, it sounds good. It sounds good. And I'm using the information from the song. Or maybe someone in the, in, in the solo, um, in one of the trades, right before my trade, the soloist plays something that I'm like, ooh, I like that. They're, so we're playing. They go. You see? And suddenly now it sounds relevant to what's happening around me rather than just random ideas that are not connected to anything that's happening. All right, so this last tip or Q-tip, if you will, is um, to make sure or try to create a common thread through all of your trades. So I'll play, let's say I play four trades right now. Um, uh, and I want you to hear how I try to keep a common thread through them all, even though the, the material and the trade themselves are different. Let's see if I can do that. One, two, mm -mm. right? Well, okay, let's see what happens. Okay, what happened now? One more to go. Okay. Cool. Right? And again, maybe it's not so obvious to, you, to the listener or you right now, but to me, everything that I played was completely, totally uh, related to that first trade, that idea. I took that idea and applied it to all the rest of my trades. You can take more obvious rhythms. Maybe you go... You know, and then you orchestrate that in way in different ways. Right. So you can use all those different orchestrations in your different trades and it'll sound more connected and cohesive. So that is the lesson. I hope it was helpful. Um, do a lot of studying. And of course, check out if you're looking for new material to check out. Um, again, I've transcribed 
and kind of created phrases off of some of my favorite drummers ideas and that's going to be in volume two some of you have volume one but volume two of my uh, it's not just bebop it's some more modern ideas modern drummers uh, solo vocabulary ebook so you got to check that out but until the next time you know what to do practice hard but practice smart take care bye bye